What is up car addicts? In this video I'm going to be going over everything that's broken with the introduction of the new Chop Shop DLC update. Now normally I don't make videos like this but there's actually a ton of issues with vehicles, businesses, etc. So I felt a dedicated video was necessary so that Rockstar can possibly fix some of these issues. So let's get started with the new DLC cars. Firstly the Gradio Maggio has some miscategorized items in the customization. So firstly, we have some splitter options in the front bumper category, that's normal. However, we have a separate splitter category and there's actually grill options in there. Just doesn't really make any sense. Now these next few things are more annoyances and actual broken things for this specific car, but for some reason the roof category is linked to the top half of the mirrors when it really should be separate. Also, the car only offers the primary color category. There is no secondary or trim color, which is fine, I guess, if the primary wasn't force linked to the interior color. It's just super annoying and really frustrating, especially when you have the car painted in, you know, different colors like green or yellow, where having a green or yellow interior doesn't really look all that great. Continuing to our next car, we have the Illusion. And this one has a major issue. Now I didn't notice this when I first customized it because it was daytime in game and the customization camera is on the driver's side most of the time. So the Illusion actually has a missing headlight lens on the passenger side and a bunch of missing detail, even a little like LED strip around the edge that's present on the driver's side. Just really, really weird how Rockstar missed that. Also, for some reason, the snorkel upgrade is available at every custom shop, but for some reason in the CEO office custom shop, it is not available. This was also an issue with the monstrosity in the last DLC, and Rockstar never fixed it. Next up, on to the new Dominator GT. This one doesn't really have any issues, seems to be made pretty well. However, if you go in first person, for some reason, your character's hands aren't touching the steering wheel. Supposedly it has something to do with the seat position and the fact that it's a convertible, but I haven't seen any older convertible DLC cars that have this issue. Anyways, moving along to the Vigero ZX convertible. This one has the same issue with the Bluetooth steering wheel, but <laughs> it has even more of a glaring issue. And that's that the passenger side rear quarter window does not go down when you bring the convertible top down. Also, you can't even shoot it to try to like break it, so it's sort of forced there, which is really, really annoying. The best way you can try to sort of hide it is by having no window tints, so it sort of blends in a bit more, but once you see it, you really can't unsee it. Just very, very annoying. Also, if you install the carbon performance skirt option, it's actually missing on the passenger side, which is a pretty funny oversight. Also, for those of you on current gen, this one has HSW upgrades, of course, and in the turbo category for this car, it's supposed to say stage 1, 2, and 3 turbo like the original Vigero ZX. However, on a convertible, they gave it the same names from the electric HSW cars, which are the race and sport modes. Just really, really weird. And lastly for this car, with the launch of this DLC, at Simeon's this car is available with the stock wheels in black, which is something that a lot of players have bought in since you can't normally paint stock wheels. However, the one in Simeon's has a tan interior, and guess what? While the normal Vigero ZX has an interior color trim option, Rockstar forgot to add the option in for the convertible variant, meaning you're stuck with that tan interior if you buy it from Simeon's, unless you utilize a merge glitch to change it. Just very annoying. Next up we have the Astrope GZ. This one is actually missing the race bumper option for some reason. It just copies over the street front bumper. However, if you install the race bumper option, you can actually see it in in-game reflections. So it will actually show the intended race bumper option in reflections, but not on the actual car. Ah, uh, Rockstar, I don't see how they missed that one. And lastly for this car, it's actually missing the suspension upgrade option, which is really annoying with how high the stock ride height on this thing is, especially the front end, it just looks kind of ridiculous. It doesn't look good at all. And in the game code, the suspension option is actually there, it's just hidden. 
So for those of you who do merge glitches and stuff, you can actually lower it by merging a lowered car onto it. But for normal people who don't do glitches, this is very annoying. Rockstar obviously forgot to add a suspension option on this car, and it looks really weird in stock ride height. Now onto the police cars. The two Stainiers offer visual customization, which I did not expect. It's very cool. It even tells you on the website that to install this customization, it must be done in a player-owned property because obviously they don't want you customizing a police card LS Customs. And on the website description for the Riot Van, it says the same thing. However, the Riot Van is not a personal vehicle. It's a Pegasus vehicle that offers no customization. So you see the website note, you get excited, you spend almost $5 million on it, you go to call it in to customize it, and surprise, it has no customization since it's a Pegasus vehicle. Very misleading, and I have a lot of my friends who have wasted a ton of money on this thing thinking it had customization based on website description when it doesn't. Continuing, Rockstar has broken the plate section for car customization, and after some experimenting and discussing with friends, we figured out what causes this. So, before the DLC released, there were a max allowed amount of 35 options in the license plate category if we include up to the 30 personalized plates. But now with this DLC, Rockstar has added 7 new vanity plates. Now 5 of them are hidden as we only have the Sprunk and E. Cola one currently in game, but in the background of the game code, it still thinks that only a max of 35 are allowed when it's technically up to 42 now when we factor in all the new plates in the game code. So what happened is Rockstar forgot to increase the max amount of plate options in the game code. So if you scroll past option number 22 in your plates, right when you go to option 23, it will actually brick your game and get you stuck in the custom shop with no menu. You can't move your camera, you can't do anything. The only way to get unstuck is by pausing and swapping sessions another oversight of something that's really annoying. Let's hope they're able to fix this via a tunables update, but for now I would not go past option number 22 on your plates or maybe just delete some of your custom plates if you don't want to experience this issue. Very, very annoying. Moving along, the Raiju Jet has a random engine sound bug where you can't hear it when other players are flying it. Now this is random, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's most definitely an issue if someone's trying to grief you in this jet and you can't hear it approaching you for at least a little bit of warning so you can prep in some way, you just get blown up out of nowhere. Also before this DLC, the Raiju had an issue where normal bullets wouldn't damage it and that was fixed with this new DLC, but not really. It doesn't give you credit for the kill, it just says that the pilot died. That, that's just wonderful. Like The pilot killed himself when you're actually the one that killed him. It's just... Oh man. Anyways, next up we have issues with businesses. So, with the new salvage yard business, there are five locations to choose from, with the most expensive one being the La Puerta location. Naturally, a lot of players buy the most expensive one, as did I, and it's located in a junkyard, which is actually a gang attack location. So if you're trying to enter your salvage yard property and there's a gang attack going on, it will not let you. So you're forced to complete that gang attack and then you can enter the property, just very annoying. Again, gang attacks don't happen all the time. They occur roughly once every in-game day, but it's still oversight from Rockstar. They really should have disabled the gang attacks for that location, but they didn't. So I highly recommend avoiding this location and buying one of the other two in the city. Now, for those of you who own the old auto shop business from the tuners update and the brand new salvage yard business, there's actually a very weird bug going on between those two businesses. Every time one of the tow truck salvage cars from your salvage yard business is finished and then it disappears after it's done being salvaged, for some reason, the customer car on the primary lift in your auto shop will straight up disappear. I, I, I don't understand why that happens. This is... <laughs> Very annoying, and I don't see how Rockstar made this mistake. I'm sure a lot of you have noticed that you've been getting a lot of messages from Sasanto lately saying that a customer car has arrived, and you're probably like, what? I haven't done that business in a while. Why aren't you a cars arriving in there? Now you know why. Because the other one keeps disappearing, and then new ones keep appearing, replacing them as if you sold the other ones or delivered the other ones when you, when you didn't. And it gets even worse. 
Rockstar somehow broke a lot of the customer cars where they require upgrade options that don't actually exist. So one of my friends Dornier sent me this and you can see that the Hermes is requiring a roof upgrade when the Hermes doesn't even offer any roof upgrades, which means you can't complete the required customization and deliver the customer car. I do wonder what happened between these two businesses and how Rockstar somehow linked them together and broke the old one. Oh boy. Also, for those of you who remember, back in September when Rockstar gave us the Michael Franklin and Trevor outfits for the 10 year anniversary of GTA Online, plus the three weapon tents, for some reason Rockstar has broken these weapon tents and locked them. So they're not available to apply anymore. If you select it, it says that you're not high enough of a level to unlock it, which the rank requirement is zero, so that doesn't make any sense. I even tried it in the agency, still the same issue, so yeah, Rockstar broke that somehow. But anyways guys, there you have it. Those are all the broken things that I and a lot of my friends have noticed with the new Chop Shop update. If there's anything that you've noticed that I missed that Rockstar has broken with this DLC, definitely let me know down below in the comments. As always guys, thanks for watching, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.